The fetal Crafts acylation is a reaction in organic chemistry that allows us a way to add acyl groups onto benzene molecules without actually destroying the aromaticity of those benzene molecules. So it basically gives us a way to form acyl benzene molecules. So the general form of this reaction is shown on the board. We take the benzene molecule, we mix it with the acyl halide and the aluminum halide to produce our product, the acyl benzene compound. Now notice the X simply designates some type of halide. It could be chloride, it could be bromide, and so forth. And the R designates our arbitrary hydrocarbon group. It could be a methyl compound, it could be an ethyl group, a propyl group, and so forth. Now, in the previous lecture, we discussed the Friedel Crafts alkylation, and this is the Friedel Crafts acylation. And these two reactions are completely different, although they do have their similarities. Now, unlike in the Friedel Crafts alkylation, where the aluminum halide acted as a catalyst. In this reaction, the aluminum halide does not actually act as a catalyst. In fact, for this reaction to actually take place, we have to make sure that we add a stoichiometrically equivalent amount of aluminum halide to our mixture to actually produce our product, the acyl benzene. So if we want to produce one mole of acyl benzene product, we have to include one mole of aluminum halide. So this aluminum halide is not a catalyst. It is actually destroyed in the Friedel Crafts acylation reaction as we'll see in just a moment. So let's take a look at the reaction mechanism of this acylation of benzene. So I, I basically broke down this mechanism into two sections. In section one, we basically form our electrophile. And in section two, that electrophile reacts with the benzene to actually form our acyl benzene. So let's begin with section one. So the first step is to form our electrophile, is to form our Lewis acid that can actually react with the benzene in step two. So in step one of our electrophile formation, we basically take this acyl halide and we react it with the aluminum halide. Now, this acyl halide has two positions where it can act as a nucleophile. So this can either follow pathway A in which the oxygen acts as a nucleophile to form this product intermediate, this complex, in which the oxygen has a positive charge and the aluminum has a negative charge, or it can follow pathway B where the acyl halide uses the lone pair of electrons on the halide that acts as a nucleophile attacking the aluminum, forming the following complex intermediate. So basically, once this reaction takes place, there is an equilibrium that exists between two, uh, these two complexes. And the reason that we form this complex in the first place is basically to weaken the bond between the carbon and our X. So in this case, the bond between carbon and X is a relatively strong bond, and that means the X, the halide, will be a relatively, or actually will be, a poor leaving group. However, in the second step of our formation of the electrophile, we have this molecule that we form the complex because this bond is now weaker as a result of the formation of the positive charge and this bond here, basically the formation of this bond creates a good leaving group because this bond becomes relatively weak. And so in the second step, this bond basically breaks and this entire leaving group detaches, it breaks off, forming this leaving group as 
a ion of itself as well as this acelium ion that acts as our electrophile. So this is the Lewis acid that we will need to use in step two to basically react our benzene with our acelium ion. So notice we have resonance stabilization. That is, if these two electrons basically form a triple bond, the second pi bond, we shift our positive charge from the carbon onto our oxygen, and this is a stabilizing effect. So in section one, via two steps, we basically form our psyllium ion, which is our electrophile. So let's move on to step two, or let's move on to section two. So in section two, we now have our electrophile, the Lewis acid at disposal. In fact, the psyllium ion, our electrophile, will now react with the benzene molecule that we have here. So the benzene molecule acts as the Lewis base, it acts as the nucleophile, and our two electrons in the pi bond basically react with the carbon forming a bond as shown in this diagram. So this is our bond that is formed, and the carbon loses its charge. It is now neutral because we have four bonds attached to this carbon. Now when this breaks off, this develops a positive charge. So this carbon has a positive charge, but because we have these two pi bonds, we have resonance stabilization. So basically we have three resonant forms and only two are drawn in this diagram. So if this pi bond goes into here, the positive charge moves onto this carbon. And if this pi bond goes onto here, the positive charge shifts onto this carbon. So the charge basically shifts among three different carbons and that is a stabilizing effect. Now, notice when the electrophile basically combines with our benzene, aromaticity is lost momentarily. So going from this to this, aromaticity is lost. So in the next step, we have to undergo a deprotonation reaction. The benzene has to be deprotonated at this carbon to actually reform that pi bond to reform our stabilizing aromatic ring. So what happens is this ion that was formed in this step basically now reacts and deprotonates our benzene. So this bond, which is relatively weak between the halide and the aluminum, grabs this H, forming our HX. In the process, we also form the ALX3 and we form our pi bond. So these two electrons, when the H atom is grabbed, these two electrons form this pi bond. Now, this is not the final step because we form the aluminum halide and the aluminum itself is not very electronegative. It will tend to lose electrons while this oxygen is electronegative. So basically, these two will combine to form a partial positive charge on the oxygen and a partial negative charge on the aluminum. And as a result of the formation of this bond, we basically have a molecule that is not yet the final product, the acyl benzene. So in the final step, to destroy this bond between the oxygen and the aluminum, we have to add water. If we add water, what the water does is basically breaks, it disrupts this bond between the oxygen and the aluminum, forming aluminum hydroxide. So we have aluminum hydroxide, we have HX that is formed, as well as the acyl benzene. 